At Tate Britain, passing by the Freud, Bacon and Hockney paintings, you stumble into a dark room full of antiquities on plinths. It's the Chapman Family Collection. Billed as cultural artefacts from former colonial regions and brought back to Britain by family members of Jake and Dinos. In here, the feeling is more of an old dusty museum than a modern art gallery. But this whole exhibit is a lie. Some French students walked in and the first student into the room said, ugh, it's just some African ship and they all walked out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like looking at holiday snaps. I mean, you know, you, you, people someone have... Someone else's holiday snaps. Or someone, <laughs> we are even your own. I mean, it's like, you know, you can be, av you know, be an avid holiday snapper, but, you know, when you look at them, they're completely shallow and vacuous. Well, also, you're not in them. Well, that's a very interesting... Mm. Yeah. Did you enjoy the process, or did you hate it by the end? The process of the work is, is the fact that we were subordinated to a thankless task. You know, the idea of actually making the things and having to, you know, kind of con ourselves into being able to produce things which are schizophrenically not us. I think we feel more alienated from the work than anybody else does. You feel a fool for not realising it much earlier. Once discovered, it screams at you. But what drove the Chapman brothers to represent one of the world's biggest brands in this way? We're kind of very interested in using symbols that everybody not only understands but don't don't really think about anymore. They become yeah. kind of almost un, un, unthought about. If you think about the trajectory of modernity, you know, McDonald's started life, or Ronald McDonald started life as, as something which had uh, emancipatory values. You know, liberating people from cooking food, a kind of like a that the higher value of modern life. And then it ends up that the kind of the, the, the downside of the trajectory is the kind of litigious clown that kind of has no humour. But they have also had to somehow discreetly shift from being this kind of, um, you know, absolutely fluorescently toxic company to something that they, they think they can camouflage themselves by painting McDonald's green. But it's a very funny work. Who is the joke actually being played on? The, the work is, although the, the dynamic is kind of pretty vulgar and obvious, mm. It's quite difficult to work out what the ethical component of the work is. And so the way that the people read the work, or the way that you're kind of misled in your reading of the work, is to assume that the work, by some liberal discourse, is that it's about anti-globalisation. It's about, you know, in actual fact, it might be the opposite of that. It might be that what we're doing is we're restoring to McDonald's the righteous origins that they deserve. Or, or not. The point is that everything is put in, in kind of a state of flux where you don't know. Any, any decision that you come to in front of those objects is a decision that you've made because we, we try very hard to make our position very not definite. You can't tell from those objects whether we're picking on the anti-capitalist or capitalist. Do you ever go to McDonald's yourselves? Um, mm. uh, quite a lot. I feel better, better. He's not allowed to see. Not allowed to see he goes there ever. Why? He's supposed to be a vegetarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Weird and wonderful. The Chapman Family Collection is at Tate Britain until spring next year. See it while you can. <laughs> <laughs>